and Greenland as uh, uh, more or less um, just a, a, a part that has been underlined by, by this uh, uh, colonizing force. Um, for 200 years, more or less, uh, Greenland was a closed country. Nobody could travel to Greenland, and nobody knew anything about Greenland, and there were no interest in knowing anything about Greenland. But there were people living there, and the Danish colonizers were there, and they had uh, stations, and they had uh, a mine force up there compared to the, to the original uh, population. This all changed in the beginning of uh, the last century, about 1900. The interest in Greenland uh, and the Arctic grew, and one of the pe people who, who were a driving force in this were a, a polar researcher called Paul Asperson. And I am the head of the department of the museum in his name. So what he did, what he did 120 years ago, uh, is what we have been exhibiting, what we have been uh, repeating constantly, telling uh, the Danes and interested Greenlanders coming to our museum what Kjell Rasmussen did uh, in Greenland, how he disseminated the knowledge of the Greenlandic culture, culture and also uh, the people of the Arctic. Uh, what happened was that Kjell Rasmussen, he was born in Greenland, he knew uh, the Arctic languages, it turned out to be a common language, uh, from Greenland and all across the, the Arctic, uh, North America. And what made uh, him so special was that he actually traveled and visited all the Inuit groups in Arctic uh, America. And this was hugely popular in, in all of, uh, let's say, the, the Western civilization. So suddenly there was this, one of the final frontiers not being explored, not being exhibited, Suddenly, uh, there was information about the Inuits, the Arctic people, and a lot of the images being uh, disseminated were about uh, the special kind of way they lived. So, living in igloos or snow houses, uh, in the summer in, in tents, telling stories, telling about the, the, the myth and the religion of, of the pre-Christian, in your societies. And this was the case with Phil Rasmus and a lot of other uh, polar researchers. They wanted to grasp the originality before it disappeared uh, due to Christianity and, of course, uh, the, the uh, colonization. The problem here is that this might be super interesting. And this was the, the goal for these people to try to, to take care of this vanishing culture. The problem is this stayed in the minds of, I'm talking about Denmark now, but, but all over the Western uh, civilization, as an image of what an Inuit or what an, uh, an Arctic person would be, what a Greenlander would be. This image were kept uh, up until the Second World War. After the Second World War, uh, a growing number of Greenlanders came to Denmark for a lot of distribution reasons. It could have been family, education, and it could also be health. Uh, and this created a different image of uh, the Greenlanders in Denmark. Suddenly they were shown in the, in the streets, and this were often people who came to Denmark because of psychological problems. As I said, there was people coming from Greenland uh, for all sorts of reasons. But they emerged into the society, they went to college, they went to university, they went uh, just uh, into normal society. But there was a small group of Greenlandic people who couldn't come with Danish culture, with Danish society, with the, with the demands uh, and the way you should live. And, and some of them fell into alcoholism or uh, medicine abuse, and they were very visible in the pictures of, in the city scape. And so you have in Denmark these two different, and you still have, uh, and this is what we found out by interviewing our informants, this is what they mean, these two stereotypical pictures of who they are. Are they these pre-Christian, original um, uh, inhabitants of this remote, exotic uh, 
uh, part of the world, or is it abusers, alcoholists, uh, people shouting in the street, making people unsafe, uh, and and uh, the majority trying to distance themselves from these from these people? So these were the, the images, and um, and I have myself Greenlandic family. My colleague Ivano is of Greenlandic descent. And so we have heard these stories, and we were trying to explore how, how these uh, stereotypical views uh, affected the Greenlandic uh, persons. The, the, and this is, I have to be careful, I know, but, but the, the normal functioning Greenlandic people in, in Denmark. So we reached out to the Greenlandic houses in Denmark, there are four of them. They are cultural, social, and, and legal assistant institutions, very well functioning. And, and they are kind of hubs for the Greenlandic population in Denmark. Um, and we have a very a good uh, cooperation with these houses. And um, through them, we, we reached out to uh, informants uh, from the ages of 22 to 80 plus, I think the oldest was 83. Um, and we gave them uh, the opportunity to talk about their everyday life and what we experienced and what we found out was that they Every single day they leave their home, uh, go out the door, they need these stereotypical views of the Greenlandic people. So they have to start explaining who they are and where they come from and how the reality of Greenland is and so on. So um, we made, as all partners, a local exhibition on this. It has been traveling to the Greenlandic houses and also the Museum of Immigration. And the response has been very uh, positive. And this was like a test for us uh, that this was actually uh, seen as a positive thing. And the idea of giving a platform for people to talk, to go into dialogue amongst the Greenlanders themselves, but also amongst the Greenlanders and the Danish majority. So we hope we have created some more uh, dialogue and, and uh, accelerated the knowledge about uh, Greenlanders living in, uh, in Denmark. And uh, what we have heard again is that this has actually created a new positive dialogue and we are very happy with that. And we will continue in our museum to more and more go away from this, uh, the old way of uh, disseminating the knowledge of, of the Arctic and go into this uh, new way. This is much more important that we uh, learn about each other and, uh, and find a good way to coexist. So, thank you.